So today I'll be using my phone to record this. So we'll have to see if I use it again in the future. As you can see, I've chosen the presets we need. The new one we'll be focusing on today is the customize origin option. And we'll also be using the standard array for our ability scores. So let's start with our race. I'm going to be picking the ASMR for this as it proves to be a great choice to opt in for the customize origin feature and the subclass that we'll be picking later on. So for the sub race, we're going to pick the Scourge ASMR. The ASMR are guardians of law and good. Their patrons expect them to strike at evil, lead by example, and further the cause of justice. The Scourge variant is brimming with divine energy. Its desire to destroy evil is at best unflinching, but at worst, all-consuming. You start with two charisma, for now at least. You gain a Celestial Resistance. This gives you resistance to necrotic and radiant damage, to which when you take those damage types, you take half of the damage instead. As an action, we can restore hit points equal to your level, to yourself or to another creature. Healing hands can be used once a day. Additionally, for the light bearer, we gain the light cantrip for free. Our sub race gives us a bonus to our constitution by one. As for radiant consumption, this is our unique sub racial feature, gain at third level. You unleash divine energy from yourself, pouring out from your eyes and mouth, threatening to char you. This creates a 10 foot radius of bright light and an additional 10 foot radius of dim light. Yourself and each creature in the radius takes radiant damage equal to half your level, rounded up. Plus, when you activate this, if you deal radiant damage from an attack or spell, you deal an extra bonus equal to your level in radiant damage which is going to be perfect for our Barbarian and their subclass later on. You can use this feature once a day. So I'm going to be looking over customizing our Origin, as Charisma will not be suitable for our build, so let's change those. So next, let's assign those ability scores. let me show you what Standard Array is. So Standard Array gives us six set ability scores we can assign to our character. These include 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and eight. So for our Barbarian, Strength and Constitution will be our primary stats. And Dexterity is always good to pick up too. So let me show you how this works. So I'm going to be picking our background. I think Acolyte will be perfect for this. So the next thing on our list is our description to pick our portrait and I have a name in mind so I'm going to be picking Zenva. You've spent your life in the service of a temple to be specific, God or pantheon of gods. You perform sacred rites, offering sacrifices in order to conduct worshippers into the presence of the divine. You are not necessarily a cleric. Performing sacred rites is not the same thing as channeling divine power. As for languages, it doesn't really matter for this build, but we'll pick up Elvish as it's pretty common in most D&D settings. And we'll pick Draconic for our second, to be able to speak to dragons or perhaps kobolds. So let's skip straight to Zenva's 
personal characteristics, as you can see. So we're going to be making a level 9 Barbarian for this build, so here we go. We'll start by picking up our optional class features. Each class gets a few of these ever since Tosh's Cauldron of Everything. As for the Barbarian, we get Primal Knowledge and Instinctive Pounce. Start with our skills, picking Athletics and Intimidation. In battle you fight with primal ferocity. On your turn you can enter a rage as a bonus action. While raging you gain the following benefits if you aren't wearing heavy armor. You have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. For instance if you're being pushed or thrown or grappled you have advantage on those checks or if you are doing the same things to others. When you make a melee weapon attack using strength you gain a bonus to the damage roll that increases as you gain levels as a Barbarian. And of course, what makes you a tank? You have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage. If you are able to cast spells, like earlier I mentioned the Light Cantrip, you can't cast them or concentrate on them while raging. Your rage lasts one minute, it ends early if you are knocked unconscious, or if your turn ends and you haven't attacked a hostile creature since your last turn, or taken damage since then. You can also end your rage on your turn as a bonus action. Our next feature is called Unarmored Defense. While you're not wearing any armor, your armor class equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your constitution modifier. You can use a shield and still gain this benefit also. Starting at second level, we gain Reckless Attack. You can throw aside all concern for defense to attack with fierce desperation. When you make your first attack on your turn, you can decide to attack recklessly. Doing so gives you advantage on melee attack rolls using strength during this turn, but attack rolls against you have advantage until your next turn. At second level, you gain an uncanny sense of when things nearby aren't as they should be, giving you an edge when you dodge away from danger. You have advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that you can see, such as traps and spells. To gain this benefit, you can't be blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. And finally, at third level, you get to pick our primal path. Additionally, at third level, we'll be picking up perception for our primal knowledge feature. For this, we'll be picking the Zealot Barbarian as this goes very well with the Radiant Consumption feature, as I mentioned before. So what is a Zealot? Some deities inspire their followers to pitch themselves into a ferocious battle fury. These barbarians are Zealots, warriors who channel their rage into powerful displays of divine power. So starting at third level, while you're raging, the first creature you hit on your turn with a weapon attack, takes extra damage equal to 1d6 plus half your Barbarian level. The extra damage is Necrotic or Radiant. You choose the type of damage when you gain this feature. So for Divine Fury, we'll be picking up Radiance. And as for Warrior of the Gods, your soul is marked for endless battle. If a spell such as Raise Dead has the sole effect of restoring you to life, but not on death, the caster doesn't need material components that cast a spell on you. Being the warrior of gods really has its benefits. As for fourth level, we gain our ability score improvement. We can pick up an ability score improvement, of course, or a feat. In this case, we'll be picking the slasher feat. As for slasher, one spare turn, when you hit a creature with an attack that deals slashing damage, you can reduce their speed by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. 
you score a critical hit that deals slashing damage to a creature, you grievously wound it. Until the start of your next turn, the target has disadvantage on all attack rolls. Additionally, we get to increase our strength or dexterity by 1. In this case, let's pick up 1 to strength. Starting at 5th level, we gain the extra attack feature. Yeah, it lets us attack one more time. Pretty handy. And additionally, starting at 5th level, our speed increases by 10 feet, as long as you're not wearing heavy armor, that is. Starting at 6th level, we gain Fanatical Focus. The divine power that fuels your rage can now protect you. If you fail a saving throw while you're raging, you can re-roll it. You can use this ability only once per rage. Actually at 7th level, we gain our new feature, Instinctive Pounce. As part of a bonus action you take to enter your rage, you can move up to half your speed. Starting at 7th level, we gain our Feral Instinct feature. Your instincts are so honed that you have advantage on initiative rolls. Additionally, if you are surprised at the beginning of combat and aren't incapacitated, you can act normally on your first turn, but only if you enter your rage before doing anything else on that turn. At 8th level, we'll be picking up Ability Score bonuses. This will include Constitution and Dexterity. And finally, for 9th level, we gain Brutal Critical. You roll one additional weapon damage die when determining the extra damage for a critical hit with a melee attack. This also increases at further levels but for this build, that'll just about do it. As for our equipment, we'll probably be picking up a greatsword. We'll pick ourselves up a couple hand axes. And for our holy item, we'll pick up an amulet. And yeah, let's pick a prayer book, I suppose. Let's select our goodies, equip our items, our javelins, hand axes, and great swords. As you can see, here's our character sheet. Ability scores, saving throws, senses, skills, proficiencies, and even languages. Here's a look at our racial resistances. According to our sheet, we can rage up to four times a day. So let's roll our attack. So we have a 24 to hit their armor class. And we deal 9 damage, including 1d6 plus our level, which is 9. So 1d6 plus 9 of radiant damage as well, on top of that. It's going to be our Zealot Barbarian. If you got this far, thank you for watching, seriously. But if you could give me a like and subscribe, that could help this channel grow. And I can keep making these videos that I'm so passionate about. And I want to talk more about tabletop role-playing games, role-playing games, and just D&D with you guys. So, I'll talk to you guys later.